What's up guys, Josh Weidman here. In today's video, I wanna to talk to you about four different types of Philadelphia neighborhoods. So the first type of neighborhood I'm calling my paper tigers. You know, you get the idea of a, a tiger, it's like this really strong beast, it's a little ferocious, uh, really beautiful animal. But paper tiger, it's got all the appearance of being strong and beautiful and you know, a, a ton of opportunity there, but really, it's just nothing but paper. It's really easy to fall apart. Now, I, I came up with this name because there are some neighborhoods in Philadelphia that from a cash flow standpoint, they look like tigers. They look absolutely fantastic. I'm talking about areas like North Philly, and I'm talking about areas like Southwest Philly down near the airport, where you know, on paper, you can, you can pick up a property for 15, 20, $25,000, put a couple bucks into it, rent it out, make a ton of money. I mean, you're talking about 25, 30% cash on cash returns. The problem with a paper tiger is it's not strong. It's got no claws. And those deals look great on paper. But in reality, you know, finding a tenant that's going to pay rent on time every month creates a real challenge. So uh, I, I stay away from those areas. I don't like those areas. And I would recommend you stay away from paper tigers too. Uh, second type of area is what I call it up and comers. These are neighborhoods that have traditionally been rental areas. Um, we've got, there's a strong uh, percentage of owner occupants in the neighborhood, but they've been, you know, uh, there, there's been a lot of uh, renters traditionally in these areas. I'm talking about uh, Cobbs Creek, Carroll Park, I'm talking about um, West Oak Lane. What we see in a lot of these neighborhoods right now is that a, a lot of transition, a lot of renovation for a retail type buyer, for first time home buyers. We've seen prices creep up from 125 to 130, up to maybe 150, 60, 70 thousand dollars, where you know you've got really strong comparable sales on the retail end, and likewise we've had rents start creeping up. Uh, probably over the last three years, we've gone from like a 950 rent rate up to maybe 1200, 1250 uh, for these three and four bedroom homes. So these upper cumbers are really good areas to invest in for cash flow. There are also opportunities to go in and rehab for a retail buyer and a first time home buyer if you're looking for, um, you know, if you're just getting into the flipping game. It, it, there are good buyers there. There are people that will purchase the house, but a lot of the uh, sale is contingent upon the appraisal and a contingent upon the buyer's ability to get a mortgage, okay? Area number three that I wanna talk about are gentrifying neighborhoods. These are areas where, you know, in the past they've been dilapidated neighborhoods and because of their attractiveness and their popularity, things are changing drastically. Brewerytown is a perfect example of this. We've seen this happen in Fishtown. We've seen it happen in areas of, of Kensington. We've seen it happen in South Philly all over the place. I mean, there are neighborhoods where you know, for 30 to 50 years, they were completely abandoned. Half the houses were shells, and really it was a mess of a neighborhood. But as we go through the progression of gentrification with the artists and the students, uh, <coughs> excuse me, young professionals, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> and then into the, um, uh, in into the families, as we go through that progression, when we're in the student and young professional phase, you know, that's a great area to go in and flip properties. And if you can get this tied early enough to buy rentals today that you can put a student or young professional into, um, you know, you can rehab it and get it rental ready. And then as the area matures, now you have an A plus grade rental that you spent, you know, B minus money for. So it, it ends up being a really nice cash flow and equity play. Uh, the, the last area, um, the last type of neighborhood is what I call mature neighborhoods. These are neighborhoods that the families have already moved in. You've got plenty of bars and restaurants and, and retail right around the area. We're talking Center City, Rittenhouse, Graduate Hospital. Uh, we're talking about very solid areas and, and really University City is another one of those. Where you do have rentals, you do have um, a lot of home ownership, but most of the rentals are really based on um, you know their, their high rent rates and a lot of the landlords purchased their house while the area was going through gentrification or they're parking their money in these properties because it's a very strong bet and and um, you know it's likely that these these investments are just going to stabilize and keep their value so that's the four times of, types of um, 
uh, neighborhoods in Philadelphia. Hope that helps you as you are analyzing your investments and looking to uh, you know buy some deals. All right, that's it for today's video. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, again, my name is Josh Wybin. Until I see you again, I wish you the best of luck in your real estate investing.